So let's take a look at logical operations. Firstly, let's look at the OR operation. Let's say you have two inputs, IN1 and IN2, and an output. And let's say these two inputs are disabled, that is, they are 0, 0. The output you get by performing OR operation between these two inputs is 0. Now, let's say one input is 0, input IN1 is 0, and IN2 becomes 1. The output you get is 1. Let's say it's the other way around now. IN1 becomes 1 and IN2 goes to 0. The output you get is 1. And let's say both inputs are 1 or enabled, then the output is enabled. This is the OR operation. Let's go to the next one, the AND operation. And the AND is quite as literal to the meaning of AND, just like the OR is as literal to the meaning of OR. Let's say you still have two inputs here and an output, and both inputs are zero, the output is zero. Let's say one of them is enabled, input two is enabled, and one is disabled. Your output is still disabled, which is zero. Let's say input one is enabled and two is disabled. Your output is still zero, disabled. Let's say both of them, input one and input two are both enabled then your output is enabled or one let's look at the last one e or or the exclusive or operation the exclusive or operation takes two inputs this let's take the two input example again the first both inputs are zero you get zero okay now let's say one input is zero and the second input is one then you get one as an output. Let's say the first input is one now and the second input is zero. You still get one as an output. Now let's say input one and input two are both one that is enabled. Here, your output is zero. That's the difference between the OR and the exclusive OR operation. It's exclusively OR here, but the OR operation, you could say it works with AND as well. While we are here, let's take a look at how the clock register RCGCGPIO is initialized. This is a snapshot from the datasheet and I'd like to remind you of what we see here. We can see that bit 6 to 31 are reserved, that is, they are read only bit 6 here to 31. The RO here implies it's read only, it's reserved, we cannot touch it. And bit 0 through 5 control pot a b c d e f bit zero through five here this here controls pot a pot b pot c d e f also i want you to take a look at the value written up here as the reset value this one here it's been enlarged here for your sake it's here zero x zero 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 with eight zeros after the x this is a 32 bit hexadecimal number to make things easier for ourselves, let's convert it to a binary form. We do this by expanding it. And I should tell you, one hexadecimal digit makes four binary digits. So each zero here makes four other zeros. The OB signifies it's a binary number, just like the OX here shows that it's a hexadecimal number. The bit we are interested in is this one here bits 5 remember we're counting from 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 so you might see bits number 6 but it is bit 5 and we can find it here this is it so we have to change this bit in in order to enable pot f if we were to enable say pot a we would have to change the first bit here but we enable pot f so this is the one we have to change now let's see how to enable pot f all we have to do is change the zero of bit 5 to a 1. Remember, zero is disabled, one is enabled because we have A, B, C, D, E, F. We change this to 1 and then put F as enabled. Now we have it in binary form, but guess what? We are coding using hexadecimal forms for our addresses. So we have to convert this value to hexadecimal. And what we get is 0x0000020. Zero 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 zero. Now, you might be wondering, where did the 2 come from? 
Remember we said H, H hexadecimal number gives us four binary numbers. That is H hexadecimal digit gives us four binary digits. Yes. So if we take a look at the binary number 0010, it translates to a hexadecimal number two. That is how come we have this here. Now let's take a look at how the OR operator is used to enable port F. This is the code from UVision OR R0 R0 number 0x20. And what this means is that reset value equals reset value OR 0x20. Remember we used index addressing to put the reset value of the RCGC GPIO register into R0. So now R0 contains the reset value which is 0x000, 8 zeros after the x basically. Another thing is 0x000020 is equal to 0x20. You can always remove the zeros preceding or in front of other integers as long as there is no other integer after the zero. So now let's perform the OR operation. First let's convert both the reset value and 0x20 into binary form and this is what we get for the reset value. We get 32 zeros and we have this for the 0x20 all zeros except bit 5 which is 1 this is the binary form of 0x20 so as you can guess when we perform our operation everything is still 0 except that same bit 5 cause input 1 or input 2 one of them has to be high for the output to be high so if you have input 1 0 here and input 2 1 here then the output is 1 and when we convert this back to hexadecimal we come up with 0x20 now I know you might be asking yourself why couldn't we just load the number 0x20 into the RCGC GPIO register the thing is if we load a set value directly into a register we risk tempering with other bits the reason why the output here is the same as the second input 0x20 is because the first set of inputs were all zeros. We were lucky enough to get zero for this first set of inputs, but we won't be lucky all the time. Using the OR operation ensures that we change only the bit we want to change. So now let's take a look at how to access the RCGC GPIO register and rename it to the system control RCGC GPIO register. This is the same snapshot from the data sheet. But now what we are interested in is up here, the base address and the offset. To get the address of the RCGC GPIO register, we will have to add the base and the offset. Let's copy the base and the offset and bring it down here. This is what we're interested in. The base and the offset. Let's copy it down here. This is the value of the base. It's written boldly here, and the value of the offset. Offset, sorry. Um, when we add them, we get this number. So, so the only way to access RCGC GPIO register is through this 32-bit hexadecimal number. In reality, this number here, which is the address contains the reset value which is 0x00 you know eight zeros after the x so because it's going to be quite tedious to always remember addresses in their 32 bit number form we can assign a name to the number so that anytime we want to access the address we invoke the name instead of the number and the way we do this is by using the equ directive Remember we said the EQU is used to give a symbolic name to a constant. This is an excellent example of it. We're given the symbolic name SYSCTL underscore RCGCGPIO underscore R to the constant 0x400FE608. The reason why we are given it this long name with underscores and not something a bit more easy to remember such as 
the word clock is that this is the symbolic name given to this register in header files from Texas Instrument and libraries from third party sources. In order to maintain consistency, we must all endeavor to adhere to these sorts of names. And I have some good news for you. You don't have to calculate the address and give symbolic names to addresses or even calculate to perform all operations accurately all the time. You don't have to go through all this process all the time. There is a header file provided by Texas Instrument which has already calculated the addresses for all the registers we need and given symbolic names to them. All we have to do is add this file to our project. As for locating the right bit and then converting between binary and hexadecimal to be able to perform logical operations accurately, I will teach you something known as the shift operation in the next chapter and this will make the enabling and disabling of bits much easier. Remember, you don't have to understand everything in this section, but if you want to be a Cortex-M guru, please endeavor to understand it all. You can watch this video, uh, you can watch this section about three times to make sure you really understand it. So, we have our symbolic name here.